In the mid 80s, the United States was home to a unique roller coaster rarely found outside of Japan. One which would take you forward, backwards, and spin you around multiple times. A roller coaster designed by Togo that wasn't even extremely rough. The Ultra Twister, awarded the D.S. Humphrey Award at the 1985 IAAPA trade show, represents another technological advancement of Togo. Six passenger cars climb a 98 and a half foot high lift and individually plummet down an 85 degree drop. Guaranteeing its passengers a ride experience unlike any other, the Ultra Twister is the next generation of amusement rides. Before we start this expedition, I just want to let you know that if you head over to our Instagram or Twitter, or even both if you want to, you can enter to win a limited edition Expedition Theme Park fridge magnet. You can also get sneak peeks of upcoming episodes, follow our theme park adventures, or for those who ask me my most asked question, what do I look like, you can see that as well. Japan was on the forefront of innovation for roller coaster design in the 1970s and 80s, much of which was being led by Togo. Togo had been founded in 1935, built their first steel roller coaster in Japan in 1953, and in the 1970s, they converted two steel roller coasters into the very first stand-up roller coasters. That innovation would continue into the mid-80s. The company would design a brand new type of roller coaster, never seen before, known as the Pipeline Coaster or the Ultra Twister. This is the Togo concept for their latest thrill ride, the Ultra Twister. As you tilt, then turn your eyes skyward, you will have little time to guess at the thrills that lie ahead. After the fall back to Earth, your ship will make a complete right-hand rotation on the top track. The Ultra Twister was a new twist in roller coaster design. It featured no turns, but multiple inversions, designed to fit into a very small area of land. Using tubular rails located at the passenger level, which would allow for a different roller coaster experience compared to under the train rails. To provide inversions, each rail would be supported by rings of steel, allowing the whole car to turn. In 1986, the US would get their first Ultra Twister at Six Flags Great Adventure. If you expect more than just a good time, then hold on and get ready for a great adventure. Great Adventure opened in 1974 after many delays by real estate tycoon Warner Leroy. Located between New York and Philadelphia in Jackson, New Jersey, it was envisioned as a multiple park resort just like Walt Disney World would become. The park would be an instant hit for families and thrill seekers as the home of Aerodynamics Runaway Train as well as the Log Flume. Its opening was a huge success, and by the second season, a further eight attractions were added. These included new roller coasters and one of the very first Arrow Hydro Flumes. In 1966, the original Six Flags Park in Texas had been sold to a subsidiary of the Pennsylvania Railroad, which was looking for non-railroad investments. They later merged with the New York Central Railroad to form the Penn Central Company. They would continue to expand the Six Flags brand building Six Flags over Georgia in 1967 and then Mid-America in 1971. Following the two brand new parks, they would begin purchasing other parks around the country and converting them to Six Flags. The first of which would be Astro World in 1975, followed by Great Adventure in 1977, just a few years after it had opened. Great Adventure had been having financial troubles and had already been sold to a Chicago bank and a group of lawyers after the first season for $37.4 million. While the park had been a success with guests, behind the scenes the company was still trying to repay the overrun construction costs and operating difficulties such as jammed access roads and unpredictable weather. For three years in a row, attendance had not increased, sticking at 2.5 million visitors per season. The new owner, Penko, studied the park for two years before deciding to buy it. They believed that Great Adventure in Time 
could become the nation's largest seasonal theme park. Now only seven ninety five after four PM through Labor Day. Right away the new owners announced a multi million dollar expansion with four new rides. One of which being the two point five million dollar roller coaster Lightning Loops. Six Flags would open the world's first roller coaster with interlocking loops made by Aerodynamics. Due to the delays, the ride actually opened after another interlocking loop coaster, Loch Ness Monster, but it didn't stop them advertising it as the first. The following year, Six Flags would add a pair of racing wooden roller coasters named Rolling Thunder. More rides and roller coasters would continue to be added in the early 80s, until in 1986, they would get that only US Ultra Twister in the Frontier Adventures section of the park. Guaranteeing its passengers a ride experience unlike any other, the Ultra Twister is the next generation of amusement rides. It is one of many major attractions manufactured in the United States by Togo International Incorporated. Announced as the most exciting, one-of-a-kind roller coaster ever constructed in the world, it would take riders at a speed of 42.5 miles per hour through a 97-foot drop straight down, which claimed that it would give riders the thrill of freefall. The ride would also be announced as the first of its kind in the world. That, though, is up for debate, with another being opened at what is now called the Tokyo Dome City in 1985. Some sources claim this ride actually opened in December 1986. What is for sure though, it was definitely there and operating in 1987. Newspaper adverts all around the US stated that Six Flags Great Adventure featured the only Ultra Twister in the world. If anyone actually does know the opening date of the Tokyo City Dome version, please do let me know in the comments. Another ride once considered the original is located at Nagashima Spa Land, but their version actually opened in 1989. Togo do have a promo video of the prototype, but the location of this one being shown is actually unknown. It clearly does show an early prototype with enclosed cars running on the track. This version uses lap bar restraints and seat belts to keep riders in place. Great Adventure Park officials state that they have been planning the ride for a few years. Kazuo Yamada, president of Togo, is reported as saying that the Ultra Twister was his idea, and it would be the only one of its kind in the world. The prototype had been built in Japan by Togo, and the Six Flags Park had been there to study the design and make some modifications such as slowing down the conveyor belt on the loading platform and expanding the safety harnesses to accommodate larger riders. It could be that the prototype seen in the commercial to sell the ride was the very first version that was sent to the US as the New Jersey version was built in Japan and shipped to the US and then carried to the park on a truck. Though this is just my speculation, construction actually began in 1985 with a team of 75 people. Great Adventure would like you to experience the ultimate Whoa! thrill. First, you drop 10 stories. Then hurtle forward into a 360 degree loop. And if that's not enough, you'll do it backwards. Six Flags Great Adventure introduces the ultimate thrill, the new Ultra Twister. Once you ride it, you may never be the same. Ultra Twister, only at Great Adventure. Located next to Rolling Thunder, costing $3 million, and with 1,181 feet of track split into two sections, the ride deviates from the normal trains of cars with single box frame cars holding up to six people. The ride begins by moving backwards and suddenly turning 90 degrees to face the rider straight up towards the sky. The train then climbs very, very slowly up the 97 foot vertical lift hill to the top of the drop before allowing the riders to look straight down at where they were headed. The drop itself was one of the steepest in the world at 85 degrees. After this is when the unique side rail system allowed the car to turn a full 360 degrees to the right in a heart line roll. The ride was not able to turn, so when it reached the end of the first section, it would stop and begin to lower using a lift mechanism. 
The experience would continue backwards, heading through two more Heartline inversions before heading back into the station. On June 6, 1985, the Ultra Twister opened to the public. The day before, the ride was previewed to the media and selected park guests. Clowns clowned around the area and a four-piece band serenaded the crowd. Bugs Bunny was even there in a suit and tie to celebrate the opening. The response to it was positive. It was so, it was so wild. It was the most incredible thing. Uh, just straight down, around, over, around. Outrageous. I recommend Outrageous. it to everyone here. Oh my, I'm shaking. Oh my God. <laughs> it's great. Many stated they had been on nothing like it anywhere else in the world. The one minute, 52 second ride was a big hit. It not only looked impressive, was unique in the coaster world, but also felt faster than it was thanks to the close proximity to the steel surrounding the rails. These rings were only needed for the inversion sections of the ride, but it was decided to cover the whole track in them on this version to create a more unique look and increased feeling of speed. Other versions of the ride do not feature the whole track covered in these rings. Ultra Twister was a rare case of a Togo coaster not really being rough, it also has a lot of firsts, a vertical lift, a moving walkway to load the trains faster, the first heartline rolls, and all of this in a tiny footprint. Just like any Togo ride in the US though, it had its flaws. The worst of these being the development of stress fractures which required constant rewilding. The vertical lift also made it dangerous to evacuate guests. A small elevator was used slowly allowing one guest to be removed at a time. Guests had to cross a gap up to 100 feet in the air to enter the elevator, making it quite dangerous. The other downside of this unique ride was that the Ultra Twister also featured quite a low capacity for riders, making the lines very long when it was actually open. The unique ride spent most of its time closed at the park. Modifications would need to happen, however they would not happen a great adventure. Those who rode the Ultra Twister were caught up in the excitement. Togo Japan Incorporated is always developing innovative amusement facilities to entertain people more effectively. Six Flags was known for relocating its rides to the company's other parks to save money when they became less popular, providing an easy and more importantly cheap way for different areas of the US to receive a new ride. The Six Flags Ride Rotation Program saw rides such as Shockwave, Z-Force, or Z-Force, Condor, and more move around the country to do this. The same would happen to the Ultra Twister, though this time it allowed the ride to have its modifications and open as a brand new, fresh ride at Six Flags Astro World. Ultra Twister will be much more known for its time at Astro World than Great Adventure, where it spent the majority of its operating life. During the 1989 season, the ride was carefully disassembled just three years after it had been constructed. They had chosen Astro World as it was a much smaller park where the limited capacity would be less of an issue. Here, the ride was once again marked as one of a kind. The original issues with the vertical lift would be fixed as it was modified to a more traditional 45 degree lift hill. News media would mark the opening of the ride as brand new and the only one of its kind in the world, once again, in 1990. Not one newspaper would mention the ride had moved from another park to the area. The sixth roller coaster of Astroworld opened in 1990, where it would remain until the park's closure in 2005. That story is for its own expedition extinct though. With the park's closure, it was once again disassembled and moved to another park, this time Six Flags America. It is reported that the ride was damaged while it was disassembled and with Togo now being out of business, it was not worth being repaired. It sat abandoned in a field for many, many years before being put up for sale in 2010 and scrapped. There are currently just a small few Ultra Twisters left operating around the world, actually all of which are located in Japan. The Tokyo City Dome version was also scrapped. A variant of the ride operates today that rather than a switch track, after the first section of the ride, it features a dive loop in its place. Here the car flies through the track facing forwards, taking the inversions at even greater speeds. Other manufacturers, including Intamin, attempted to create their own version of the Ultra Twister. 
coaster that can uh, go down the track and rotate about this axis at the same time that it's it's doing all the other things. So, so maybe you can go into a loop instead of going up over the top. You get on top and you just turn over and end up right side up all of a sudden. And then some other uh, wild uh, gyration, more like airplane acrobatics. In the 1990s, Aerodynamics built a prototype of the ride in Utah. It was twice considered to become the first and second secret weapon roller coaster at Alton Towers. John Wardley, however, did not like the prototype after riding and decided to go a different way with Nemesis. The design was scrapped altogether by Arrow. Please enjoy the thrilling ride of the Ultra Twister, about 1,180 feet in 180 seconds in a six-seater car. The Ultra Twister was unique. It was fun, and surprisingly, being from Togo, it was not too rough. With just a few remaining in the world, who knows how long this innovative ride will still exist. Only one ever existed in the US. Luckily, the memories and fun experience the ride provided with its innovative design remain for those lucky enough to ride it during its less than 18 years of operation. While considered a strange coaster, this was one that Togo just got right. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Six Flags. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.